Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. I'm going to say the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Second Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Let's lift up our hands one more time. Savior, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. I'm asking you today to anoint my lips. Oh, God, help me to preach. Oh, God, what you've laid upon my heart, anoint this people, anoint their ears to hear. God, what you have uh, to say to the church tonight and everyone said in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. I'd like to minister to you on the Bible's most beautiful word. Bible's most beautiful word. The Bible is of unequaled beauty and power. It has the ability to change the most base and vile into the image of Christ through the power of the Spirit and the message of its pages. The Bible is the most sold book in the world. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. There is no beauty that can compare to the beauty of the Word of God. This beautiful unfolding masterpiece is first of all the picture and image of God made flesh. Secondly, it is the picture of His church and ultimately the picture of His beautiful city that one day we will all go to. This masterpiece of God contains 283,137 beautiful God-breathed, inspired words. In this book of 283,137 words, there are many of them that could line up in this beautiful contest that we're preaching of today. The word love has an entire chapter devoted to it. You can have faith to move mountains, but if you don't have charity or love, you are nothing. Without love, you are nothing. So love is, is, is one in the contest. Then there's grace, the grace of God. My Lord, without his grace, where would we be? Thank God that he gave his life on Calvary. And thank God that he gives his grace to help me in my times of trouble and in my times when I need him. Then there is mercy. When we have made mistakes and we have junked out and messed up, and fell short of what God wanted to do for us. His mercy comes along, and His mercy is always there. 
Thank God for his mercy. The Bible says his mercy endureth forever. Forever we serve a merciful God that can heal and deliver and set us free. Thank God for his mercy and thank God that it endureth forever. Mercy, love, grace, and faith. Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Thank God that we can have the faith to move mountains. Thank God that through his faith that he imparts to us through his word we can have faith to, for healing in our body. Thank God for faith. There's joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. Thank God that when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I went home that night with joy on the inside of me. My God, I wanted to hug my worst enemy. I wanted to give him a big squeeze. Amen. There's something about the joy of the Lord that will help you love everybody. It'll help you. It'll keep you in the dark times. It'll keep you in the rough times. What is it, Brother Miller? It's the joy of the Lord. Thank God for his joy. However, if it was that obvious, I wouldn't be preaching this today. The word of the most exquisite beauty that I believe can be, uh, that I believe can found, uh, demonstrated throughout all the Word of God might surprise you. Patience. Somebody say patience. Now that, that wasn't a word that you was, you'd probably be expecting from a message like this. Patience is God's plan. God has a plan for every life. He has a plan for my life. He has a plan for Brother Chapman's life. He has a plan for everyone's life. Patience. When Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, God covered, corrected, and protected them. And then he gave them a hope and a promise of redemption. In the days of Noah, the Bible says, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. God put in his plan a man that would stop him from aborting his master plan. And then he asked Noah to do an impossible thing and waited for him to do it. 1 Peter 3.20, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. The long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The like figure, verse 21, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the, uh, of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The bottom line is God will have a baptized, sanctified church. Someone will be saved. Someone will get sanctified and glorified through him. We see this patience of God in his dealing with Abraham. Over the space of almost a hundred years, God kept on uh, going. He kept an ongoing relationship with a fearful and a fickle man until he was ready to see, understand, and know all that God wanted him to know and to have. Patience to us 
is the most inconvenient word in the world. We see this word as a delay to our plans. If the, if the pastor says, just be patient and let's see what God will do. We don't like that. We want things to be done now. We want it to happen now. I mean, I'm the same way. If God tells me to wait on something, I don't want it. To, I don't want to do that. I want to try to make it happen now. Patience is inconvenient to me. It messes with what I've got planned. But patience is the plan. For God, for 77 generations, from Adam to Jesus, he worked his plan. When we get weary over a week, a month, or a year, or three years, or we put a time limit on God, remember, God worked his plan over 4,000 years until Christ. He has been working his plan for over 2,000 years to bring us to the rapture. I don't think God gets frustrated because God has a plan for you and me. We can't put time limits on God. We can't say, if it hadn't happened by then, I quit. I quit praying. I give up. Amen. I prayed long enough. No, God has a plan, and his plan will take place in his time and in his way. Thank God for his plan. Thank God for his plan. Through it all, God has a plan. God don't sweat it. God don't worry. God don't get stressed out or junked out. He has a plan. You see, there will be a Seth. And if he gets it wrong, there will be a Jacob. If David fails, God prevails patiently. So here we are. We are here. And you know what I find in my own life experience? God was here. Before I got here. And God will be here after I'm gone. I'll never forget in, Tr in Trinidad, we started this church. And man, it grew. We have a picture in the office there of, of uh, a part of the church. It, it had grown since then. Man, we was having revival. People was getting the Holy Ghost. We had purchased a little tent. We was having church in it. And we was also pastoring two other churches and teaching in the Bible school four nights a week. Busy, busy, busy for the work of God. No time for sitting around. And it was time for us to go meet the board uh, and uh, for appointment, full appointment, and go on deputation. And I told my wife, I said, honey, what are we going to do with all these churches? What are we, what's going to happen to all that God has done through us since we've been here? Will it all come to nothing? What's going to happen? There's no pastors to take it. There's no people uh, to, uh, to help out. What are we going to do? And you know what God spoke to me? He said these very words. I was here before you got here, and I'll be here after you're gone. There is still the same churches that we started going in Trinidad. There's still a church in, in Guyana. There's still a church in, uh, in uh, Antigua and in Anguilla. There's still churches because God doesn't depend upon me. I depend on God. God loves me, but he does not have to have me. He is waiting on me, but if I don't get with a program, 
He can pass me over, break me off, and raise up somebody else that will further his agenda. Patience. Today you and I better thank God that up until today, patience is the plan. Got a warning for you though. Don't take God's patience for acceptance. Don't mistake God's patience for compromise. Don't mistake God's patience for time to just take advantage of Him. God has been waiting for you to get where you are right now. You are here, but He was here before you got here. And now we are here. We are here together. The word of the Lord to you today is Acts 17 and 30. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. It's time to get right with God. It's time to seek God. Today is the day of salvation. If you will repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, you'll find the forgiveness and washing and a glorious gift of the Holy Ghost will be imparted to us. Today, now is the time. The way to celebrate patience is by not making God wait any longer. There are ten I wills for a child of God. One, I celebrate the patience of God by moving forward in faith today. I'm going to do that. Two, I recognize the patience of God by no longer making excuses of why I cannot do it. Three, I embrace the patience of God by no longer procrastinating my personal responsibility for righteousness, but embracing His righteousness. Four, I will put on Christ today. Five, I will walk in faith. Six, I will be filled with the Holy Ghost. Seven, I will be a child of my Heavenly Father by walking back into His house and forever leaving the pig pen of this unrighteous and wicked world behind. Eight, I am coming home. Nine, I'm kissing the world goodbye and saying hello to a brand new me. This can be for the sinner or this can be for the saint. But everybody needs to simply repent every day that we live. Ten, I will be born again today. Amen. Come right on, brother. He wrote a poem. Brother Webb wrote a poem. I'd like for you to come and read that tonight in Jesus' name. I asked him to write a poem for this message, and he sent it to me, and it was right on, divine, perfect will of God for this service tonight. Everybody say, in Jesus' name, we're going to have revival in Midlothian. The greatest and most read book in the world has 774,746 words of truth, love, faith, admonition, and life everlasting. Of all those words, God inspired a man to write to express his love for his creation, to show his love is not just passing. His infallible words has inspired mankind to experience a power that has controlled or changed things in their life. In the course of our living, we search for a place to find peace, joy, and freedom from such strife. In the midst of trials, tribulations, and failures, a word so beautiful comes to us from the pages of the Holy Bible. As a light in the midst of all our dark failures, God expresses the one thing we all need from Him in this one beautiful word, patience. All we have to do to get God's long-suffering in our lives is to give Him and only him obedience. We were created to worship our Savior, Jesus Christ. Scripture instructs us to lift up holy hands without wrath and doubting. When doubting is gone 
and pouting ceases, the praises go up, and his glory comes down, then begins the shouting. How beautiful is the word, this word patience, when it is God's patience turned toward all of us. Clap your hands unto the Lord right now. <laughs> Musicians come. As I look back, I ask myself, how did it happen? God, through his long suffering, waited for me. He waited for me. He waited for me to repent. He waited for me to do it his way. He waited for me to make the commitment, God, I'll go where you want me to go. Say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. Just use me, Lord. But I had to get to that place in my life. Thank God that he waited for me. Seems like sometimes when we pray, we wait on him. But we're not really waiting on him. He's waiting on us. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. But to say he's long-suffering. He's long-suffering to me, not willing that any should perish. That means me. It means you. That's everybody in the house but that all should come to repentance. Thank God that he's patient with me. The most beautiful word in the Bible is patience and long-suffering to us because without his patience, there would be no reason for love or, or, or faith or any of these things because Without his patience, without him waiting on us to get to the place where we're at right now in this in this place, without his patience, we wouldn't have any of, of the uh, of, of, of the other promises of love and joy, peace, all of those things that we have. The blessings of God come because of long suffering of God. Let's stand tonight in Jesus' name. Thank God for his long suffering. Thank God for his patience.
God, we love you today. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We give you the praise. Give you the glory, the honor. You're so good. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your worship tonight, your help. Amen. God came through again tonight, blessed us, touched us. We just have to remember that God's waiting on us just like we're waiting on Him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming to the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night to experience a little bit more of God. My goal, my desire, is that every Wednesday night is just like a Sunday night, just like a Sunday morning. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's not forget those uh, uh, announcements when brother and sister uh, Givens get here. We're going to go, we're gonna, we're gonna have church. We'll have great church, and God is going to do great things. So let's not forget that. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands. Be friendly. God be with you.